about it. I've shared about. Uh, I've shared about. I've shared about the times of Gentiles. We we talked about God is dealing with two kind of people right now. So from the time he began creation, he began with Hebrews, the Jews, whom he brought through Abraham. I said, at the fall, the plan of God was interfered with. And, uh, and until chapter 12 of the book of Genesis, God has not really got a man who can take care of the whole generation. You know, we talk about Enoch in chapter 5. Who walked with God until he was normal. But Enoch walked alone. He didn't bring his generation to God. He moved alone. Noah tried to bring people. He couldn't. Now God could not continue like that. Like just taking, having just one person on earth. When there are thousands who need him. So the next plan was. How can he begin with somebody who can hear him. You know even today the same way. In that time, people were worshipping idols. And then he was looking for somebody. And the somebody who got is Abraham. And many a times when God calls a person, they make a very expensive decision. The truth is it is not expensive. The expensive decision that people make is the one that they make outside the will of God. When Abraham was called, you know, there's a way sometimes we, all of us are living and we assume that God, uh, that is the best life we are living. In fact, the truth is that is the worst life. Like for example, there's a way we've been brought up from the beginning. Everybody is used to this kind of life. But then you realize that kind of life, God is not in it. And then God just interrupts. God interrupts your schedule. Like you see, mine was interrupted when I went to college. And I never came back. I came back preaching. I didn't come back. I met him in college and I never practiced that degree until today. Although to some extent we call it pain. I don't call it pain. I don't call it pain because how many people are, are, are learning the word of God because I answered that call? So Abraham was like uh, that was the kind of that's how Abraham was worshipping idols with his parents and everybody around. And then God called him. He says, come, I will make a nation out of you. In other words, you're not the only one who will be worshipping me. All your generation, people who come from your loins, are going to worship me. All, in other words, anybody who hails out of you is going to recognize me as God. Now remember, on earth, all that worship, all that are worshipping God, they are worshipping idols. But out of Abraham, God raised the generation. Even as I came in Marsabit County, and we are doing so many things across the land, my prayer is that so many people will rise because I arrived in this place. So many. And I realized so many people are looking at me. So many. The students, whoever pastors. I just, I just realized. In other words, God can turn around the whole county. The whole. Just like it. So that is how he brought Jews to come to pass. And those, the Jews now became people who live by the word of God. That's how we got the Bible. Otherwise, this Bible will never be on earth if Abraham did not answer that call. The call of God is for the blessings of generations. God reaches far beyond you. And reaches all over people around you. Not only people. Who are in your lifetime like. Even. Your offsprings. When they come out of you. And you teach them the word of God. They, the Bible says. The children of the ratios. Shall be mighty. In the land. Amen. <laughs> the children of the. 
shall be mighty. In other words, people, the children who are coming from within us should be more powerful than us. But if they are only taught the word of God. I see such kind of life in Pastor Lai. All the leaders and pastors with Pastor Life who have been working within the last 30 years are the ones who are taking over from them. Imagine all their, their children are taking over now the church. The church they have now established is bigger than so that the one when these leaders began, the church they, be, they began with is a church like this. I'm saying all pastors that work with Pastor Life, all of them are in their sixties. But all their children are pastors. They didn't study pastors, some of them. But when the anointing comes on you. Now that they... You know, look at where they began. And look at where the parents have arrived at. Now then they are beginning from there. Wow. That's powerful. In other words, them that come from within us, and that's why I'm talking about... As a divine life family, we have to be a unique family in Marsabit. Everything identified with us must be great. Amen. Including our children. That's why I want to hear the results of these two guys. They have connected to an anointing. And they must perform the best. Amen. If they have been performing the best, then it will be taken to the next level. <laughs> Amen. Somebody brought the dean of the school of ministry where I am studying brought the, her daughter to Pastor Lai. She's been getting D, D, D. You know D, D? <laughs> D. You know what D is? Because some of you have gone to school. She brought in January and he said now she's in form four with a D. And they said she will go to university. Hmm? Now the mind of a man says what? Even if she studies so hard, it cannot happen. Do you know what she got? B plus. In one year. Si mulienda secondary, mnajaribu kufikiria kama itawezekana. As we are talking, she is working in Japan. <laughs> As I'm telling you, any child of any person who is connected to Pastor Lai, their children are far. We hear children of other pastors are criminals. But not this kind of family. Amen. Now pastors are struggling. Struggling with their kids. But this is different. Amen. It is different. Somebody, you know, I was saying the other day, somebody must love us because of our, our results. <laughs> Somebody must feel like identifying with you because you are doing what? Exploit. Huh? They are looking at you, they are like, what is it about these people? It is not expensive to answer God's call. So even Abraham brought all his children in the fear of God. But then at some point, they miss, missed it. They missed it. And they're like, you know, let me make this statement. You know, even one year, you be, can begin well in January, and by, by March, you might be redirected outside God's will. And you might still assume you're in the will of God. Until after some few weeks, you go back and realize, my life is not the way it was. I talked about distraction in the morning. That's why staying at a place of prayer is important. It's a dangerous church to go to. I'm sorry to say this, but it's true. Because for six days, you'll be hearing other things directed. 
And then when you come back, already your mind is full of other information. Even the word of God sometimes find it hard to enter you. These people just digressed from the right path. When they were expecting the coming of Jesus, they were expecting a wrong type of Jesus. When you are not spiritual, you will always desire what is wrong. When you are not spiritual, the Bible says there is a way that seems good to a man whose end is destruction. In other words, the way we look at things might always we should always be inspired by God. Always. When people begin t- telling us what to do, and many a times, no, unless someone has really studied the word of God, prayed, and is directing you well, there might be high chances that the advice of everybody is not God's advice. So when Jesus was coming, and almost is arriving, after they went to exile in Egypt, in, not in Egypt, in Babylon, for 70 years, God revealed to Daniel what will happen for the next 490 years. And within that 490 years, Jesus will die, the problem of sin will be solved, and the millennium kingdom will come. I've written it here, you can find it well. Huh? And so, he explained everything. He says, after this, at 66 years of, when, he was, when it was 66 years, that is when, Abba, when this man went and read the Bible, what Jeremiah prophesied. Then he realized that we are only to be here how many years? 70 years. He began praying. In other words, if he didn't begin praying, whatever God said will not come to pass. And as he was praying, God revealed to him what is going to happen the next 490 years. And what will even happen in our time today? And what happened? After that five years, they were taken back, led by Ezra, Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel was the governor then. Haggai was the prophet. Malachi was the prophet then. They were taken back. They built the temple. Now they were waiting for the coming of Jesus. Jesus will be born in Bethlehem. Just as prophecy was given. And after that, now 483 years, after 403 years, Jesus already arrived. He's already there 30 years. And then he was now to be crucified. But the Jews rejected Jesus. The Jews rejected Jesus. I'm exposing that in chapter 5 of John every, every Wednesday. How they reject. They told him, you're not. You call yourself the son of God. You're not. We don't recognize you. You're not the Messiah. When Jesus was going to the cross one week before he went to the cross. He went to Jerusalem. That week he was to be crucified. And the 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 disciples, I don't know if they have never gone to Jerusalem before. Maybe they have never gone to Jerusalem before. They began seeing some buildings. You now when you go to the city, what you find? Jerusalem was the city. So they began showing Jesus, wow, we have never seen. They saw the temple built for 46 years by Herod. And the thing was, you know, the, the stones were laid together. What, what they used like for cement for us, they were putting between them gold. You know, building a house with gold. Stones. And they are like, this thing is so beautiful. Who can do such a thing? They were showing, Jesus told them. No stone will remain on another. <laughs> so the question is, Jesus is against this church. That tells you every building is not the church of God. This no stone will remain on another. In fact, when he entered there, he, he, he chased people out of that. You, you people, you watched he says, my house is a house of prayer. But you have made it to be the den of lions. What you people are doing in, Jesus came. 
they were expecting him to come. But for them, they got it wrong because they were expecting a political leader. How can we remove this governor and put our own? <laughs> That's what they're thinking. So when Jesus came, he really disappointed them because he didn't meet there. So the leaders... That's why we have to be very careful with church leaders. Even today. There are many church leaders who are outside the will of God and God is not even aware what they are doing even in the church. They are obstacles to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Even today, people are gathering but not doing the will of God. I sometimes look across the church, I even wonder, why do they even have this big church in the town? Nothing is happening in the name of God. The youths are all outside the church. 90% of the youth are lost in the churches today. 90% getting themselves involved. But still people are sitting there and they are saying they are people who, of God. Even today that thing is there. Jesus said to go and begin another, another church. When that church is there. Because that church was not doing what the will of God is all about. Because they rejected him. And then he says, Jerusalem, you'll be desolate. Chapter 23 of the book of Matthew, verse 37. He says, Jerusalem shall be desolate. You will be, he says, you will be, uh, you'll be dispersed out of Jerusalem. I think we read that one. Let me read to you as I finish. I want this to enter us really because there's so much that God has. I will not be teaching a lot because I've written these things. Chapter Thirty-seven of the book of Matthew. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killeth the prophets and stones them which are sent unto thee. How often will I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. This I've tried to bring you together. For three years he preached, they could not receive you. Jerusalem is simply signifying Israel. He says, now you will be remain desolate. Now, the same thing that Jesus spoke, uh, this man by the name Luke gave us. Here, Matthew is saying that Jerusalem will be desolate. Now, when you look at chapter number 21 of the book of Luke, now if you read the whole chapter, he's talking about the end times. And Jesus was also explaining. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Let me begin from verse 20. And when you see, when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. This is now Luke who is writing. It says they will be surrounded by armies. And then he says, when you see the army has surrounded them, know that desolation is not far. Then he says in verse 24, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Look at what he says. And they shall fall by the edge of sword. Millions of them died that time. That was AD 70. That seven years after Jesus left. And shall be led away captive into all nations. You know when, when a war breaks loose in a city. What happens? People run for, life, for their life. That's exactly what happened. But this is a prophecy. It happened after 37 years. And shall be led away captive into all. When the Bible talks about desolate, desolence, it simply talks about a place that has been deserted and people have run away. It also means all the buildings have been broken, brought down, destroyed. That's exactly. If you destroy a city of a country, that country no longer exists.
Because the authority that rules a city or a country stays in a city. You know, the Russians tried, they began with Kiev. You know what Kiev is? The city of Ukraine. They couldn't bring them down. So when they realized they could not, now they are now trying to attack the outside. But the president is still there. So if Jerusalem, now when he is talking about this, now this one also signifies that God's calendar has shifted from the Jews. Listen. When the agenda of God is in a speci- on a specific man of God, they have security more than what a president has. Which kingdom is big? The one of this earth or the one of heaven? When man of God is anointed, he, the, the, the armies he has, angels, millions of them that take care of him, cannot be compared to the kind of, you know, like when you become a presidential candidate, you are given, what are you given? You are given some security, some two, a P, or three or four. <laughs> Immediately you are declared a presidential candidate. They give you such things. But the choir said, I don't need them. <laughs> Now the choir is becoming very famous with everything about him. He says, you look at them, they, the kind of vehicle that follow them. Me, I just go like another ordinary man around. <laughs> but in his house, there are some there. Because you become now the target of the enemy. Anybody want to kill? Even the same, when a man of God comes up. When you see Jerusalem destroyed, the hand of God has lifted. And nobody can make you secure more than God. Nobody can protect you the way God protects you. No one. Amen. Yeah, so, now as long as Jesus was there, they were protected. But when they rejected Jesus, he allowed, not he in fact, because every time you come out of, for example, if you stop coming to this church and you begin doing your own things there and you forget being associated with God. Now, any evil that happens to you at that point, is it God who has caused it? I'm asking a question because sometimes we read the Bible and there's a way the Bible speaks. If you stopped coming to church and you went yourself, spoiled yourself with whatever you want to do there, is it God who brought any danger that comes to you? Hey, to go up, to menda. Nauliza kama umejiondoa katika uwepo wa Mungu. Unaenda kufanya vile unataka kukula raha vile watu wanasema. Na upatane na shida ya aina mbalimbali kule. Mungu ndiye alikutumia hiyo shida. <laughs> because even these, Jesus was saying now that they have refused to be protected by me, they have exposed them to their enemy. And then he says, and then he says, now he's showing Listen, I, I think there's something I'm going to speak in this church. I know. I, there's something about spiritual intelligence. Where things that works in the realm of the spirit that controls people physically. And people are not aware. We need to learn about those things. We need to get some time. Might be. So when Jesus realized these people have left him and they have rejected him. He began seeing their future. How terrible it is. And that is how we always explain to them. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now meaning God has shifted his time from Jews to the Gentiles. He says now they are going to be trampled upon by Gentiles. Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now from that time until today, Jesus, the, 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 
the whatever the Now the, the 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 calendar of God shifted towards Gentiles. When he came out of the grave, he says, "Go and speak this to all nations of the earth. Go and make disciples of all nations." Now, from that time until today, which is now over one thousand nine hundred over seventy years, one thousand nine hundred and. 70 years, over that number of years, the gospel has been preached all over. And then you need to know we are in the time of Gentiles from that time. But the time of the Gentile will come to an end. He says Jerusalem shall be trodden down. Now from that time they were dispersed from that city. And Palestinians came and inhabited the place. When they came back in 1948, they were taken back from, I think I read about it yesterday, last week here. When they came back, their land has already been occupied by some other people. That's why today we still have that, that fight between Palestinians and Israel. And that fight cannot end. Until the Antichrist appears, Antichrist appears, he's the one who will try to bring a solution. One of the solutions he will bring is he will make sign contract with both of them. For how many years? Seven years. For seven years. And within seven years, he will make sure that the temple is built. Now, if the temple for Israelites are built in Israel, the time of the Gentiles is over. From the time they went back until today, from 1948, they don't have a temple where they worship God. When they get back to their temple, the church will not be on earth here. It will be raptured. Because the time of Gentile is over. When Trump came to power, he made a statement. Jerusalem now has to become the city of Israel. Do you know when he made that statement, all people who are waiting for the prophecy to be fulfilled, their ears were up. What is the man fulfilling the prophecy? Because the city of Israel is not Tel Aviv. So it's not Jerusalem, it's Tel Aviv. If it is declared the city there, because the temple will be built where? Right in that place. One of the things that the church is really waiting, even as we are preaching, if you begin hearing something like that in Israel, know that your time is coming to an end. Although according to the scriptures, Antichrist will appear after we have left. And it's Jesus who will release them. And that's why we are saying the coming of Jesus is more nearer. And to be specific, it will be in this generation. Ah. It will be in which generation? I explained last week, I said, they came back in 1948. That generation that saw the coming of Jesus, from that, Jesus says, and this generation shall not pass. Now, the generation that sees the restoration of his Jews back to their land, that generation, and we say that generation is 400 years, it's 100 years. So, from 1948 to 1920, 20, 2048, within that period, also all the prophecies that were talked about will be fulfilled. I read to you all of them, 11 of them that has happened in this generation. Like for example, the explosion, the knowledge explosions as spoken by Jeremiah chapter number Daniel from chapter 20 verse 4. 
this knowledge shall be increased. Have you seen the information how it has increased in our time? In 1960s, 70s, those, the knowledge is not as much as we have today. The last 10 years, what has happened? For those of you who go to YouTube, today you can get whichever knowledge you want to know from Google, YouTube, it is available. What don't you get it? When, did you, when was YouTube discovered? And Google? Yeah. Not to digital copy. Google ilianza lini? Ama internet ilianza lini? Tulizaliwa tu tukaona internet. <laughs> Email ilianza sasa sisi wote tuko. Si mtu saidia ama sisi ni wale wa generation was easy. Tulijikuta tu tuko na email eh? na Facebook account. <laughs> Those things were not there early 60s, early 70s, 80s, 90s. And from the time the internet arrived, the information became available. All kind. Do you know today many people who are stars in different fields are a product of YouTube. Not even what they got in college. I am a, a product of YouTube as a pastor. I downloaded all teachings by Miles Munro, Pastor Chris, or from 2011, and I've been listening and listening. And I've just gone to church, to the school the other day. But I've learned how many people by just studying YouTube have rose and become great? There's another university called YouTube, if you're not aware. If you go there and study your area of, speci of specialization, you can get all information that you need. All. That is cheap school compared to the one that you go to. You, all the information you need is there. So that is one of it. The rebirth of Israel. If you see Israelites going back, the generation that sees that the nation of Israel being formed, that generation, that's the second thing. The third thing is Jews will return home, I think. Then Jerusalem, Jerusalem no longer under Gentile control. As we are talking, they have not taken full control of that place. Yes, they are there, but still fighting. Days of deception. Deception today is more. International and instant communication. Prophesized by John in Revelation chapter 11, verse 3. Chapter 7, verse, verse, chapter, in Revelation chapter 11, verse 3, and verse 7 to 10. Instant communication. Today you can communicate with somebody who is far away from you. Today. You can talk like instant communication. Somebody is another continent. Hmm? Google Meet. Zoom. There's another one called what? Team what? Is it team or what? You are, you are discussing, you are teaching people. You are talking to people from far away. What, this is signs of the end times. I know many of us are not aware. Famine and pestilence as in the days of Noah. Is our generation like in the days of Noah? If you look around, what do people think? What, is, what do you think? Or what is, what do you qualify? How, what, what are the characteristics of the people who are in the days of Gentiles, uh, in the days of Noah? I've given it here. Let me just read to you one, two, three, four, five. The five I've given five things here. As in the days of Noah, 
five things I will read to you, just so that you look around and you see. Like number one, iniquity abounds. Too much evil. Wickedness. Are there more wickedness? Today because of internet, there are more wickedness. Because of internet. So much wickedness. Number two. People were too busy with their own lives. In the day of Noah. And they didn't care what is happening. Noah is talking. They did. Noah looks like a mad person, crazy man who doesn't even know what is happening. Too busy. Pastor, you are too busy. Number three, only Noah participated in the work of God. You know, you might ima- you can try to imagine the number of believers in the church. And the very church is bankrupt. The account of church is empty or has little money compared to the account of people in the, Meaning people are not interested in the work of God. Evangelism, discipleship. We took my squeezy to this house. And Jesus said, Go and make disciples. Number four, only Noah and family prepared for the flood. How many people are preparing for the coming of Jesus? Pado, Pado, I just you know, when I write this book, I look like a mad person. This one. And I've explained everything here. On the radio, I'm explaining this. Mama Fever was talking to my mom. She said, you know, Jesus is coming. He says, no, no, I just think. Uh, yeah. And he says, while they are saying peace, sudden destruction lands on them. Chapter 5 of 2nd, 1st Thessalonians. Number 5. The fifth thing is... I think I only put it there for. But there can be many, many. What I'm telling you is we are living in the time when Jesus is coming. Then the other thing is the, the, the design of the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast was designed between early 1960s, sorry, late 1960s and early 1970s. By around 1971, the mark of the beast was there. This thing now you can put now, they prefer to put it on your right hand, not on the forward. Because the Bible says it's either on the forehead or on the right hand. That thing was developed by 1972. Today, it is already there. Microchip. Have you heard of microchip? You don't need to carry. In some countries right now, people have it on their body. You don't need ATM or to carry card around. Your information has been fed on what? A microchip. So you get in, if you want to go to, if you go to a supermarket, you just go in there, buy, and they just read your information from where? It is happening right now as we are talking. That's what I'm saying. This is the, this is the generation that will see the coming of Jesus. I've explained 12 things here that has already happened from 1960s up to this time. And the other question is, there are so many nations of the earth that has heard about Jesus. Jesus says when this gospel, when this gospel Reaches all the nations of the earth as the witness. Then shall end. The end is about the end of the time of Gentiles. It's not the end of the earth. Because after we leave, people, life will continue the way it is. I'm praying that all of us will be rapturable. If that is in any way in English, what? <laughs> now you might come on Sunday and you realize pastor has left. Then you can become a pastor. Hmm? And, the, and the going is very, you know, the, 
There's no sign for a rapture. There is no sign for a rapture. There is no sign. Thank God at least we have, we have, I'm giving you some of these things that will happen before the rapture. We're not going to say now, something will happen like this and then it will, all of us will go. Mwe tare, ukiona, utashtuka kila mtu anaenda tu penya likuwa. Anaendea tu penya likuwa. Kama ulikuwa kwa gari, unahama tu kutoka pale. If you're in the house, you just go from there. If, there's, hakuna filimbi inapigwa and you're sasa, tunajipanga, tunataka kuenda. Ebu muweke vitizoni pamoja, tunataka kuenda. Kama ni safari, si tunasema tujipange. Sign, there's no sign. The Bible says, in a twinkling of an eye, will be changed. And then we... So, rapture can happen any time from when? Now. Amen. I'm done. Utanda kwa makanisa, hakuna maubiri kama hii. Hakuna Na unajua, you remember the ten virgins? Five wise and five? Kwanyo kitu itafanyika lini? That is talking about the church. A half of the church will not be in rapture. I'll talk about it next week as we finish this chapter. And the Bible says them that have, do not have oil in their lamp. They have quenched. Wamezima rom takatifu kama kama steamer. How many churches have done that? When, the, when you, you do not have a, an active relationship with the Holy Spirit, you will not prepare for the coming of Jesus. It is dangerous to be in a church where the Holy Spirit is not active. Dangerous. I will expose that next week. I will show you. All of us are talking about the word of God. All of us. Yes, so I think uh, I'm not telling you it's happening tomorrow. I don't know when it will happen. But it is not far. If you are saying from 1948 to 2048, Just encourage yourself and assume it will be 2048. Because we don't know when exactly it will happen. Because Jesus, Jesus says this generation will not come to pass. In fact, at, when you are in 1940, 60, they are one by one. And that's why we must understand the time in which we are. We must understand the time in which we are. What the Bible says about it. Amen. Father, we are thankful for that. We give you glory. We pray that we become active and alive even as we anticipate your appearance in the sky, in the air. And Lord, we make us them that are worthy for that day. And even as we live in this life, as we go around the daily business that we have, we are going to pray that Lord Jesus we be very sensitive even to the things that you have spoken to us in the word, even as we go around. We might be doing our businesses going everywhere, but alert in the spirit so that this day will not land on us in a way that we did not expect. But we put our houses in place in order even as we anticipate your coming. In the name of Jesus I pray. Amen. We can do our offering as we come to the end of this.